Hey, Claudia. Oh, hey. It's Maria from B&H. Hey, Maria. <laughs> Welcome. How Hi, are you? We're here in your brand new studio, and I wanted to see if you had time for 21 questions. Oh, I would love to. Okay, awesome. So tell me about this new studio. Well, as you can see, we literally just moved in. I'm sharing the studio with a few friends and I'm super excited. It's got a beautiful view and beautiful daylight. So I'm just kind of getting set up. I'm actually shooting. This is my first official shoot in here. So I'm going to have a person come in later for some headshots and just setting up my pro photos and getting some stuff ready. And yeah, it feels good. <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. So what type of photography do you shoot? I am a portrait shooter, so everything that has to do with people, I, you know, I just love interacting and I love, you know, making people feel good about themselves and then, you know, bringing out the best in them, really. Yeah, that's amazing. And what got you started in photography? I think I have to blame New York for that, to be honest, <laughs> because I, I grew up in Germany and um, I came to New York the first time right out of high school. I just spent a year here. and. I have to say, um, I think coming from a small town in Germany, then being in New York City and just experiencing all the different cultures, nationalities and the streets, I just like roamed the streets with my camera and, and it's just so fascinating and, and eventually I took some photo classes here and I think I just realized that wow, this is something that people can actually do as a job and as a profession and not just as a hobby. And, so I really fell in love with it in New York. That's amazing. And what was your first camera? My first camera was actually this little teeny red point and shoot film camera, I have to say, because I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> and my parents gave it to me, I want to say in elementary school, and I loved that thing. And it, I remember it had one of those flash cubes that you had to put on top. And I think you had four, four bulbs in there so they would burn out and then you have to buy a new pack and I, I just I have no idea what I photographed with that camera but I remember I treasured it and I loved it and I'm glad my parents kind of instilled that in me yeah that was great so what's your go-to camera lens now well I don't know if you can see it but over here is my R5 my Canon and um, usually for portraits, I love the 85 fixed lens. It's a beautiful portrait lens. So yeah, I'm kind of new to the whole mirrorless uh, situation. And I have to say, I, I really, really love the camera. You've been really busy during this pandemic, right? Yes, I Tell have. me about what you've been doing. So interestingly, uh, I mean, the pandemic, of course, uh, when the first lockdown happened, every just, everything just kind of came to a standstill and my calendar got wiped clean. And it was pretty scary to, as a freelancer, to all of a sudden have no jobs lined up and actually not being allowed to work at first. I like, literally had to stay home. And um, then I kind of was lucky in the sense that I, I've been working for Mount Sinai, which is one of the big hospitals in New York. And so I want to say two weeks into the kind of beginning of it, they called me and they asked me if I would be comfortable documenting their efforts and you know all the things that they had to do to kind of get ready and to, to deal with this pandemic. And so this is what I kind of started doing. And um, so while I was working at the hospital, I, um, I thought of doing a personal project and I really wanted to honor the healthcare workers, the frontliners that really throughout this whole thing have been working so hard and, and, and just being so dedicated and, and brave. And so I got permission to do a photo shoot, a portrait shoot with um, basically whoever wanted to volunteer for the project. And, and it was a beautiful day because I feel like they really understood what I was trying to do with the project and they really opened up to the camera and they really gave me their, you know, their emotional state and the exhaustion and the sadness and, and all of it together. And I, I was really, I felt really, really lucky that, that they trusted me with that and that they understood where I was coming from. And so I called the project Faces of Resilience 
because I feel like that's really what it comes down to. They are the most resilient people I've ever met. And so, yeah, and the kind of nice um, outcome of this was that Good Morning America actually picked it up and did a little web story on it. And it was just really nice to see the excitement of mostly the frontline workers that they were so happy that they were being seen and that you know, they were given a voice and um, that you know, they're not forgotten. Um, and so, yeah, that, that project really, it means a lot to me and I'm, I'm really glad I got to do it. Yeah, that's amazing and so inspiring. And so clearly you love doing portrait photography and having to hear people's stories. So what drew you to portraits? In the first place, I think, I think I just always liked the, the human connection. I think the camera is kind of giving you this tool and you know, I'm not, I could be a little bit more introverted at times and I'm not, you know, that person that comes into the room and is kind of noticed right away. So I think having the camera, it kind of opens up doors for me and it lets me connect with people on a different level. And it, it's, it's kind of like I have a focus and a mission and it's, I just love that, you know, when you do portraits, you could meet people from all walks of life and it's just so interesting if you're open to learning from them and really kind of seeing them and wanting to tell their story. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So I love the way you use light to give a message in your images. What's your goal when photographing a person? That's, that's a good question. Um, so I think I just always try to craft the light to each person, you know, and, and depending on how, you know, I would like them to be seen. So meaning, if I want to have them be very powerful or vulnerable or you know happy and excited, so it kind of I feel like the lighting really helps that. You know, of course, also the composition and the angles. But I I really think that every person ideally needs to be lit in a different way because the you know face, the bone structure, skin tone, all of that is different for each person. So you really. In an ideal world, if you have the time, and, and it, it really helps to cater the lighting to each person and to each situation, really. Right. And you photograph so many women, from models, healthcare workers, entrepreneurs, and even young girls. What's something you've learned along the way behind the lens about women? Photographing women, it's, it's very interesting because I, I do have a very soft spot for <laughs> for kind of highlighting women and making them feel empowered. And, and I love when that happens, when they actually are kind of up for the ride and they let me do that with my camera. Um, but also it, it can be challenging sometimes because I think we as women, a lot of times we have a lot of insecurities and you know this, this, this idea of beauty, the, the beauty standard out there. I think that, that put a lot of pressure on women. And so I feel like it sometimes takes more time to make a female feel very comfortable and feel like she can actually own who she is. And, but I, I do like that challenge and I think because I'm a female myself, I think I can help them with that and help them, you know, just love themselves and, and kind of show that on camera too. Of course. And March is International Women's Month. So why do you think it's important that we advocate diversity in not just gender, but also race in the photo industry? Well, that is super important. So I'm, I'm actually really, really glad that BNH is, is actively doing that. Um, I, you know, obviously I've been a female photographer for many years now, and I, I never, I, I always try to not let that kind of stop me or feel like I have disadvantages. But you know, obviously the industry is. It's been male dominated and you know, a lot of white males. Um, so I feel like what it comes down to is really supporting each other. I think you know, women need to support other women and, and you know, we also need to just make sure that you know, women and, and that there's a lot of diversity. And I think just getting people a seat at a table is the most important thing. And I think there's so much talent out there and a lot of people just haven't had the chance to, to you know, be, be in the running for a big job or you know, to, to really even show their portfolio to an art buyer. And I think 
making those opportunities happen and, and being supportive and not just seeing everybody else's competition and more so like lifting everybody up together. I think that that I'm hoping for that and I hope I hope that I think there are the, there are some steps that you can see that things are shifting a little bit. So I really hope that we can shift faster and more. <laughs> and I, yeah, I would just love to see you know more diversity, more more strong women photographers. That would be Absolutely. amazing. Me too. And as you mentioned, you photographed so many people from many walks of life. What has been one of your favorite stories? Hands down, probably being in Tanzania, because I, I have to probably say that I love um, shooting for nonprofits. So there's, there's one specifically called Artists for World Peace, and I've been traveling with them and you know, doing great work for, for orphans and, and also empowering women and helping them. So, one of the things we did was we brought an eye clinic to this village in Tanzania and I got to interview and follow some of the patients and this one guy, he had pretty much almost no vision left in both of his eyes and so he needed cataract surgery and we were able to finance that for him at, a local, at the local hospital and I got to be with him before the surgery and then a few days after when they took his bandage off, they had to do one eye first because they can't do both at the same time. And I filmed him and I spoke to him while that was happening. And that, that was a moment I will never forget because he literally started yelling and screaming and laughing and he started reading this eye chart. And he, he couldn't stop reading the eye chart because he was so excited that he can actually see and it's not all blurry. And he was so happy that he actually forced the doctor to keep him at the hospital and then two days later do his other eye. So I mean, this guy, you know, he's always going to be in my heart. And it's, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, it's just beautiful to witness that and to, you know, to film and photograph something like that and share a story because, you know, that's, I think, what, what life is all about, I think. <laughs> And I heard you're speaking at Depth of Field this year. Are you excited? Pretty much. Yes, I'm really actually really psyched. I've, I've been um, at the Depth of Field a couple of times in when, when it was still in real life. And, you know, I've always liked the education that b &H puts together. And so, yes, I'm very honored and very, very excited that I get to be a speaker this year. And, it's actually something that um, doesn't come very natural to me and I've kind of been successfully hiding from public speaking engagements for a lot of my life. And, but I really realized that I think these days it's, it's very important to also, you know, be out there and do more speaking engagements and, and kind of, you know, share what you, what you can share, like, you know, help other photographers that maybe are at a different point in their career and and I think um, I'm excited to do that more and kind of you know take that challenge and and get more comfortable with that and, and just really help lift out other people up and um, hopefully you know I can share my knowledge and I can help with that. So do you have any projects coming up? Well I always have projects coming up but um, actually right now we you know we're, I mean we're just moved into the studio so the studio is a little bit of a project still for me to get that all up and running and um, you know but I do love personal projects so as soon as I have everything settled here I want to I definitely want to explore again and because I think they are super important to you know for personal growth and you know to be creative and to, to try out new stuff and really kind of beyond the jobs that you have because I feel like you know Personal projects, they just let you do whatever you want to do and whatever your passion is and, and however you want to express that. So it's for, for me, whenever I have the time and the energy, I, I find it super, super helpful. And so, yeah, so I'm definitely planning something very soon again. <laughs> awesome. And switching it up a little bit, what are some tips for somebody who wants to photograph someone who isn't a model? Yes, yeah, so I have, 
I would say 90% of the people I photograph are not professional models. So I want to say tip number one is definitely try to get to know your subject before you actually meet them, before the shoot. Um, and you know, this can be a phone call. It, for me, it used to be meeting someone for coffee, but right now it's still a little bit iffy to do that during a pandemic. But you know, have a Zoom call with them. And for example, if, if it's, let's say, an editorial shoot for a magazine and you have a subject that you know, is a little bit more well known, go online and Google them you know, and, and research them and see if you can find some hobbies, a passion, so, like find out some of their story because I think knowing a little bit about them, it, it just lets you communicate with them differently and, and I think everybody kind of respects and, and appreciates if you went the extra mile to find out who they are and you know, this way it can be a nice icebreaker and you can just talk about something that is interesting to them and that makes them feel excited and you know, which is way better than just talking about the weather or, you know, how bad traffic in New York City is. So <laughs> that's my tip for, Perfect. yeah, for, for shooting people that are not models. Awesome. Okay. Coolest shoot you've ever done? Coolest shoot? <laughs> um, I, I would say I, the coolest shoots that I've done are probably my collaborations with some of my hairstylist friends. So I've actually, I'm about to post one on Instagram because we finally get to share it. And um, it was just a beautiful collaboration. This friend of mine, Jamie Wiley, she works with Purology and she is such a magician and such a talented hairstylist that, you know, she, the, 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 the creations that she can do are just amazing. So for me, working with other people that are just so creative and so excited and so passionate. I think that for me makes it the coolest shoot because I just get to play and we get to just you know create together and just have something that is completely without um, an agenda from someone else and just you know for the for the sole purpose to create and, and, and have something beautiful to show. Yeah. And most challenging shoot. So, luckily I haven't had a ton of crazy shoots that, that were, you know, technically or otherwise very challenging. But I like this memory of when I was assisting still in Germany and um, my boss back then that I was interning for, he took me on this trip to Switzerland where we, we were shooting snowboarding gear and clothing and all that for, for a client. And I was pretty much a beginner snowboarder. And they took me on these crazy uh, <laughs> black diamonds and what they're all called, mind you, with photo gear on my back. And I was horrified and I, I fell flat on my face so many times. At that point, they took the photo gear away from me <laughs> because I was clearly not capable to get myself down the hill with that stuff on my back. So I, it really physically and mo emotionally was really the most challenging ever because, you know, it ju just to kind of try to, to stay alive <laughs> that day, I felt like that was, it took all out of me. And, but it, it's, a good, it's a good reminder and it's a good memory that I think, you know, we, we sometimes we get faced with things that we feel like we can never make it through and in the end you know somehow i survived and and it was actually a, a great experience so yeah. yeah natural light or studio light do i have to decide <laughs> <laughs> i mean i really i don't think i can i think there's um there's a magic about daylight if you know the certain time of the day and certain pockets of light and if that happens i i feel like you cannot match that it, it, there's there's nothing i can do in the studio that that will create that same magic but at the same time you know i like shooting in the studio i like having the control and being able to fully craft the light and you know make it hard or soft or somewhere in between and so yeah i don't I don't really feel like I want to decide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. And if you could only shoot one forever, 
Would it be studio portraits or on location lifestyle? Again, I have to decide. <laughs> Well, I do love to travel, so I want to say maybe not so much lifestyle, but if there's only one thing and I could actually make a decent living with that, I would probably travel the world, work only for nonprofits, and document. So, yeah, so I would have to say that would win over the studio. <laughs> yeah. And if you weren't a photographer, what would you be? I think that I would have probably studied psychology, which is very interesting because I was always interested in that. And um, I was very close to actually enrolling in university and to, to do that. And I think in the end, I kind of figured out a way how to use that in photography because I, I realized that over time that shooting portraits with people you have to have a kind of sense for, for human psychology and you have to be that kind of person that can, you know, kind of get in their head and figure out what might be going on with them. And so I, it's kind of nice that I found a way to, to have that in my job, you know. Yeah, so that was an interesting kind of um, aha moment when I, when I yeah, found that, that out. That totally makes sense. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? I've received a lot of great advice, I have to say, because I always um, sought out mentors. You know, a lot of the photographers that I assisted for gave me amazing advice. But I think what probably stuck the most was that you, when you're photographing people, you should always treat everyone with the same kind of respect. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're shooting this high profile CEO or, you know, this orphan in, in Africa, I think if you kind of um, encounter everyone and, and, you know, show them real interest in who they are and, and show them respect and be humble, I think people react to that and I think they share something with you that they otherwise probably wouldn't and, and I think that really that, that advice really stuck with me, and I think I, I'd like to think that I've really been doing that all throughout my career, and it's you know it's been it's been working out. And aside from your camera, what's your favorite piece of gear? So many pieces of gear <laughs> that I love, but I have to say they're not. I don't have them here right now, but I do love. There's um what the. Westcott, the company, they make great modifiers, which I love in general, but they do make a rapid box, it's called, and it pretty much made my life so much easier because it kind of sets up and collapses just like an umbrella, and so you don't have to fiddle with all the, the pieces, and you, know, you don't need a lot of strength, so for women, I would say, and, and if you a lot of times have to go on location and you might not have an assistant, it's just been such a breeze, so, you know, having those modifiers definitely, definitely made my life easier. Perfect. And if there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I've never thought of that before. <laughs> um, probably would have to be someone that can do a good German accent. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Um, it, it would be very interesting. I would have to think about that a little bit more. Okay. And last question, who should we interview next? How many can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because we're going into Women's Month and we've been talking about diversity and females and all that, I think my friend Sam Isom, she, you know, and you guys can look her up online, she doesn't well, first of all, she's super talented. She does shoot stills and also motion. So she's been doing this project where she interviews and shoots the uh, community of black scuba divers. And those portraits, they are in water and you know with all the scuba diving gear. And I could look at them for hours. And I think you know she she needs to get more exposure. And I think she you know the world needs to see her work. And so, yeah, I would love it if you guys could interview her. So cool. Well, we'll definitely look her up. And thank you so much for taking the time and answering all of our questions. Thank you for coming. All righty.